Hello there. Today on Andy's Shed, we're going to be restoring one of these. A GPO Telephone 150 from the 1920s. Let's get on with it. This Telephone 150 has had a fairly hard life. And in later years, after it stopped being a telephone, someone converted it to be a table lamp. We're going to convert it back into a telephone and get it fully working. In this episode we're going to be stripping it down seeing what we've got, what parts we need and getting rid of things like the lamp that we definitely don't need. But first, how do we know this is a genuine telephone 150? Well, if you take a look just here you should find a number and if I can get that in the right light and we can focus in on the camera you should see there at number two crossed out that's because this is converted from an old telephone number two into a telephone 150 and above where the number two is being crossed out you will see the number 150 telling us what it is. So that tells us what the phone is there and they're generally a telephone number two that crossed out, they're not generally new telephone 150, they're normally built out of something else. And on the other side here you will see a code for the date of manufacture. So the first thing that we're going to do with this telephone is strip it down and uh, check it over, see what parts are missing and what parts we need to replace and what restoration we need to do on the parts that we've got. So let's get cracking. Obviously this telephone has got no cords left on it. They've all been cut. You can see the remnants of where the cords would go into the base here and here on the receiver is the remnant of the receiver cord. The receiver is basically three pieces. This one has been stripped on the outside to reveal that it's made out of brass or something like that. Anyway, um, but if I take this end cap off, which just unscrews like so, ah, I've found the first missing part. There should be a flat diaphragm in here, which you would slide off. It just sits there and you would slide it off sideways. Um, then there's this magnet assembly inside. So that is stripped down into three parts already, which I'll put up here. And we should, though, have a diaphragm, which we've not got so I'll need to get one of those. The next thing to do is to remove the transmitter. We do this by giving it a turn anti-clockwise like that until it clicks then pull it off, put it off. Now inside here it should have a transmitter number 10 or a number 13. This one has got a number 13. So there's the transmitter part there. The next thing to do, I think, is going to be to try and get rid of this awful lamp conversion on the top. Uh, normally these are just drilled into the brass top of the phone here and then screwed in. So let's see if we can unscrew this one. And it looks like we can. I don't think the wires are connected inside it. Oh, the wires are there. Got the wires are there, pulling out. And that's got rid of that. And it looks, from what I can see of these wires, like for the lamp, which will be a high voltage, 240 volts here in the UK, it looks like they've used the original telephone wires for the 240 volts for the lamp. 
which is not good at all. Okay, next thing to do is to remove the back of the transmitter housing and we do that by removing these three screws in here. You'll see three screws in a uh, triangular pattern, two at the bottom, one at the top. We take those out and this whole housing will come off the top. So we can remove these screws, that's one, that's the wrong screw I was going for there, that's the one I want. You're basically going for the screws that aren't connected to anything else, they aren't connected to any metal parts in here because the ones that are connected to metal parts actually hold those metal parts into the uh, Bakelite or plastic housing. So there's the third one and that's that. Right now the rest of it how do we do that? Well this one's not fitted with a dial it, is, it does however have a number card so this was a pre-dial phone, this was one that was used in an area that didn't have dials. We used a very small flat bladed screwdriver, like a jeweler screwdriver. And what we do is we just pick out the edge of that and it flirts out normally just like that. And you'll see that is a ring that just holds in a clear um, window and then the dial card is inside there. Interestingly this seems to have a 60s or maybe even 70s dial card in it for Newmarket. So that's out. Right, to get the rest of the phone apart we need to start looking underneath. Under the base here you will find one large central screw. So I need a big screwdriver for that, a flat bladed screwdriver, undo this screw in the centre, which you find is retained probably, and then you should be able to just pull the base off like that. Be careful, the base is very heavy. It's made out of uh, cast steel, I believe, and it's a very heavy unit. Okay, now we've got the base off, you will see inside what the base was attached to, this thing in the centre here. Now this is actually part of the upper part of the phone, and what you should be able to do is pull the upper part of the phone off, like so. If you can't pull it off just give that a gentle tap with a rubber mallet and it'll start to move like that and you can pull the whole phone and the innards off the base. Obviously at this stage if your phone has line cords attached they'll be going through this rubber grommet here um, but as mine's got no cords attached that's not such a big issue. And then here's the innards of the phone. Now here you will see six holes which are marked, they'll be marked things like 3 and two, T and 2 and R and another T and uh, I and R. They all be, all be marked on there. But these holes have also got little inserts in them that are insulating inserts. So when you put a bolt through these holes, the bolt isn't electrically conductive to this metal frame. And you can see the inserts in here, the little black inserts. If you're lucky you've got those, if you've not got them, you'll have to make them somehow to restore the phone. There should be far more contacts in than this, and I'm going to have to replace some, get some little um, bolts here. I'm told um, that these are 
um, three BA bolts, I believe, that go through here. They're more like little set screws, actually. You'll see it's got a screw head on the back. So it's a little, a little machine screw type thing, and it's a 2BA size, which is a British size. So that's as far as I'm going to go for now with the, the dismantling of this. I don't need to go any further. I've got it pretty much into most of its component parts. What is interesting here is you will see where this has been converted to a table lamp. This is the electrical cord for the table lamp. One side of the lamp, of the circuit for the light bulb, has gone to the chassis of the phone and the other side is switched on and off through the hook switch, which is here. So when that heavy receiver has been on the rest here, the lamp's been off, pick up the receiver and the lamp comes on. But that high voltage, that 240 volts, has been going through this little contact here, which is not designed for anything like 240 volts. So I'm hoping that's not burnt out, this contact at all. It still looks pretty good from what I can see. So let's hope for the best there. I hope you've enjoyed this video on how to take apart a Telephone 150. If you have, please give us a like and a subscribe. Every single one does help the channel to grow. And also remember, we've got a website. It's andyshed.callpress.net. That's andyshed.callpress.net. Go on there if you want to get in touch with us, if you want to find out more about what we do, see some of our other videos, and also if you want to support us either through Patreon or by buying a t-shirt, a bag, or a mug through our online shop. Um, all your support is very much appreciated and it lets us keep doing videos like this. So, until next time, thanks for watching and see you soon.